Welcome back to the World Championship Series as we just have a few more series left to go here in the round of 16. That's right, we're going to have Snoot going up against Scala here in just a few moments' time. Two very storied players from StarCraft II going to be facing off against one another. I'm joined by Rotterdam and Nathanius here. Uh, are you excited for some Snoot versus Scarlet? As a resident Zerg versus Zerg expert <laughs> of this tournament, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's my answer. Okay. I'm very excited. Roddy? No, I think it's going to be good. I mean, this is obviously a kind of a classic as well. We had Stefano versus Nurture early. I was mm. incredibly excited for that one. And uh, now it looked like kind of silly. It's like, God, can Roddy just stop the fake hype? I was like, no, guys. I really was looking forward <laughs> to it. And Stefano has been so good lately. But yeah, he just couldn't bring it to the show against Nurture. Or Nurture's ZVZ was a little too solid. Or Stefano was up too late last night. That, that is always a possibility as well. Uh, but this one, it should be good because if we go back, like I'd say, like two, three years, we would have said, like, the two best foreigners in the world, yes. you know, let's go. We would have talked it up so much. And this is still a really big series. But it's almost weird that Snoot is still top, top tier. But I don't think we often see Snoot anywhere in, like, the top three, top five of foreigners. It's mm. kind of, like, a little bit below that, which is odd because <coughs> Snoot has always been on top in the foreign scene. I think you can make a very valid case for Snoot being the most successful foreigner of all time. But, you know, this year it hasn't really come out yet. So will Snoot be able to bring it today? That's the big question. I think that's a really interesting point about both of these players in this tournament mm. is that they are extremely popular. They've yep. got a ton of fans. Yep. And they're both grossly underperforming the, okay. in, in WCS. We, we don't see them at the top. We don't see them making these top four finishes, getting to finals. They've been gro like, overshadowed by players like uh, Serral yep. and Neeb Nurcio. and Nurcio to Showtime an, ex to an extreme the, degree. Exactly. Past. Those are the players that we've yep. talked about the yep. most in the last year of StarCraft II. And, and it, you know, we talk about Scarlet. Oh, yeah, they play in, you know, she plays in Korea. We know that she's good. But, well, you know, where, where are the results? Show me the money is, true. is what people come into these tournaments want to see. It feels like the entire ecosystem has kind of evolved around them. I mean, as much as, yes, they are still the formidable players that they once were, Everybody is now just more formidable, Roddy. Yeah, it's really funny because in 2015, when we had this one WCS region lock year, Nate and I looked at each other in the beginning of the year, and I never forget. I was like, well, is Snoot going to win one or two tournaments this right. year? Yeah. And in the end, he didn't win one. He did have a good start, made a quarterfinal. And then it was like round of 16 and even a round of 32. And we looked at each other like, what's going on? Yeah. 2016 was in WCS. I'm not going to say it was a bad year for Snoot because he made it to the global finals. And of course, he won in Mexico, which was great. And he also won that tournament in China. It wasn't the Gold Series, it was that other one. Forgot the name of right. the massive prize right, pool right. where he won 4 0. But, you know, the regular WCS events, events like this or an Intel Extreme Masters, mm. the DreamX, it's been a while since we saw Snoot break into the semifinals. Well, of course, we can check in with Smix now. Are you ready, Smix, for two of the most popular foreigners of all time, actually? I am excited. We just saw a riveting TVT, and we're now about to enter another close mirror match. I'm really looking forward to this one, as we have Snoot, the most successful foreigner of all time in terms of prize winnings, and of course, a top Zerg in Europe, going up against Scarlet, who's been busy practicing in Korea against the very best and competing in the GSL. This might be one of the closest series we see today. It's Snoot and Scarlet. That's right, as Mick says, it, it's a funny one, this, because it has the potential to either, to either be the longest series of the day, or it could be a short series. You really don't know whether with a Zerg versus Zerg, especially with players of this caliber, depending on how they're looking to interact with the earlier stages of this matchup, Roddy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we know Snoot, right? Snoot likes to sit back when yep. he's behind and likes to sit back when he's ahead as well. He likes <laughs> to take the entire map. There have been so many series where Snoot wins 4-0, but it's the longest 4-0 I've ever seen, yep. you know. No, well, I think it was with you, Nate, a while ago, or, Kessler, or was it with you, James, where we did uh, Snoot versus you Thermal, and those games just lasted forever. Weren't you with Todd um, in but, Challenger? Yeah, it was a Challenger in Cologne mm. or Katowice, whatever it was. Every game lasted forever. Yep. We're like, oh my god, it doesn't end. But big series, both of them currently not in the top eight, yep. definitely within striking distance. Snoot number nine, Scarlet number 14 in the rankings. So it's possible for both of them, but obviously a win is mandatory here. Yep, and that's what I was talking about with this underperforming. We expect to see these players mm. making very deep runs. The competition is stiff, though, and I guess that kind of becomes the sad situation that one of them has to go out now. Yep. So one of them will bow out with, yet again, a, a pretty reasonably disappointing performance from the, the fans, the hype that we build up for these players, and that makes things crazy. And, of course, 
On the flip side of what you said, Scarlet has no chill. So I we could see any sort of build out yeah. of her. She will bring cheese. She will bring super crazy all-ins. And that goes, it gives us the dynamic where we expect Snoot to be the more passive player in this series. Uh, you know, one last thing, James. What I'm still shocked by is that Elaze has said in Yon Chopping that he had an easy bracket. Well, Elaze had Scarlet in the run of 16. And I was like, yep. how is that an easy bracket? Even if Scarlet hasn't won a championship lately or as of late, she's still qualifying for GSL every single season. And she's still Scarlet. Like, she's incredibly good. I don't think there is one particular weakness in her play. I think her macro is, is excellent. Multitasking is great. Micro has always been great. Mm. So how on earth could Elaza think that like getting Scarlet in the round of 16 was easy? In the end, he did win, but it was incredibly close. It was like 3-2 for yeah, Elaza. Yeah. I don't think that Snoot is looking at Scarlet as an easy draw at all. I think that yeah. they both look at each other and be like, you know, there were better options out there, <laughs> but I guess I'm just going to have to do my best. Feels like European Zerg versus Zerg is kind of one of the staples mm -hmm. uh, to actually look at in the, in the world, in fact, as to how you're going to be playing the matchup. One thing to note is that Snoot has had a good round of the 32 here, despite him, yep. you know, he got a top 16 at Austin, top 16 on Chipping as well, but he beat Neeb and sort of in the round of 32, and that is no small feat by any means in that uh, The sad part about all that is that it doesn't count as much as it counts right now. Those True. wins, as nice as they are, did not put uh, him into a position where he is getting, you know, to that striking distance. Yeah. He's not, it's not pushed him into that top eight. This is where the wins really count, and this is where we haven't seen those wins come out of him so far this year. And like I said, th this is a very high-pressure match feel for both yeah. players because of that. This is the part where you fizzle out and your right. year is just nowhere near as good as you were hoping it was going to be. Or you take that next step, and you still, I think, you need to get further even in the round of eight for both of these players to really start mm. to be happy with what you've been doing in this tournament. On the other side, though, uh, you've got Scarlet, who has to be in a kind of a stressful situation, both playing GSL consistently and WSS consistently. Very few players here can say that they're doing that at the moment. Yes and no. You can say on one hand, obviously, it is more stressful, because especially at GSL, you have to specifically mm. prepare for a group. On the other end, you can also say that she has more opportunities, right? Yes. Like, it's not only the WCS system. It's not everything or nothing at one WCS stop, because he also has multiple competitions in Korea that he's focusing on. But I do think that Scarlett is also looking at these brackets, looking at these players that often go further than her, and it's like, wait a minute, I don't think they're better than me. Right, you know, right. we, we all yeah. love Scarlett for her confidence as well, and she's not afraid to speak her mind, which is great. But Nate is right, you know, it's been a while since in one of these tournaments, we've seen both Snoot and Scarlett yeah. shine. It's, a, it's kind of a shame that they run into each other here, and I would have liked to maybe see one of them go up against like Probe or Neeb, and we'd have some different matchups, but at least it, it, this should be a really close ZVZ series. Yeah, I said yeah. it earlier today, James, I was wrong, but this one, it just <laughs> has to be close. Well, I believe we are ready now to head over to the players. Thank you, gentlemen, as we do head over now. Scarlet versus Snoot here to find out who moves on to the round of eight. Thank you very much, James. As we said, we are going to be hopping into the ZVZ. Only one will make it out. Pig, how are you feeling about this match? I think this is going to be a great match between these two very closely matched opponents and one which, even as someone who studies both of these guys, I look up to them a lot. I've learned a lot of builds from them back when I was a pro gamer. I cannot say who's going to come out on top. They're going to be, you know, very different styles, very unique players, and both titans within their own right. Absolutely, but here we go. We're going to hop and introduce the players as we start up here in the top right-hand corner of Proxima Station. The Blue Zerg player from Team Liquid. Put your hands together for Snoot. One of the hardest working and most consistent foreign players in all of StarCraft II's history. And of course, facing off against one of the most famous players herself. Down here in the red, it is Scarlet. Well known for her famous borrowed banelings up against <laughs> Bomber many years ago uh, in a famous uh, Red Bull tournament, I think it was. And, uh, you know, there's been so many big matches that she has had in, in huge events. Has quite a history uh, and very well known for the Zerg vs. Terran matchup. You know, mm -hmm. Scarlet, she sometimes complains about the volatility and fast-paced nature of Zerg vs. Zerg. 
she always has a few choice words about Protoss players, despite being <laughs> incredibly good in the matchup. And actually practicing Protoss. In fact, she spent a <laughs> solid at least hour today warming up for the ZVZ by going ahead and killing Zergs with Protoss. Oh my gosh. And and she actually played one of the qualifiers as Protoss for uh, either this or Yun Shiping. That was a fast right? that was a fascinating qualifier. She yeah. killed three Zergs until she I think she finally went up against Jon Snow. Who Jon was Snow like, took no, it down. That's enough. <laughs> I am not gonna let you just beat everybody with your off race. Oh, she uh, she definitely knows how to bring it out. Of course, uh, many would remember a famous uh, MLG match back in the day where she took out Dongrei Gu as mm. Protoss as well. And, uh, you know, she, she's definitely one with a lot of scope. And wow, looks like both players here are going to be going for the very fast three hatchery play on Proxima Station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Proxima Station, a nice map just because there's a one entrance to your third that also, if you can defend your third, you're defending your natural, you're defending your main base. If you can get a, even a nice wall up later on, it makes it a lot easier to kind of transition to that kind of late game. But one thing you did mention before, uh, while we kind of wait for the game to ramp up, is it does seem like it's going to be more of a macro-oriented game. You mentioned how Snoot is a hardworking player. I have a fun little statistic. Snoot has played 389 competitive series in 2017. To give you an idea of how many matches that actually is, Bly, the man who is literally known for playing an online competitive series and tournaments, has only played 307. That's almost 100 less than how much Snoot has been playing. This guy is a madman. He is playing on the European ladder. He's playing on the North American ladder. He's playing till 7 a.m. a lot of the time. Yep for himself. And he's known for changing up his sleep schedules to be in the best, uh, you know, the best performance, even when he's playing on, on weird time zones, uh, wins so many online cups, something we all admire about him. Of course, this game is about to start picking up because we are seeing Ooh. some variants. Snoop playing full gasless, which means no Zergling speed. He's really looking to just defend and go up to the Roaches, but a lot of Zerglings on the way for Scarlet. She's got that Zergling speed. She pulled off gas afterwards, and now she's pulling up for a big Ling Flood. Okay, well, here we go. We'll see how this ends up as the uh, Evolution Chamber is going to be going up for Scarlet. Do you think she drops in the back with that while hitting the front? Uh, does she have any Overlords well oh, positioned for this? Oh, yeah, that's a great one right there um, that we just saw on, on screen. So, yeah. yeah, and she's only on 22 drones. She's going to be going all in. And she's shown her hand, Fear Dragon. She's running out with all of these Zerglings. Oh, oh. my gosh, so many Lings on the way. The wall's going down. Snoot is realizing exactly what he's up against. He is desperately trying to reinforce that wall. Oh, man, this is going to be so difficult to defend, but he does get up a fantastic wall. And look at this. A lot of these lings are starting to focus fire down one of the buildings, but there's already a secondary wall ready to go. Queen's going to start oh, to whittle away at those lings. Oh, they're coming in. The Evo Chamber's getting low. Fear Dragon, the next Evo just barely gets down in time. The Zergling's trying to get in, but they can't. It's oh, a full good, wall. Good surface area on the Queen's, though. There's no transfuse energy just yet. There we Whoa. go, just barely in time. Double transfuse, but there's no damage output. And the Roach wall. Warren. Oh. Where is the Roach Warren? It's finally finished, but Roach production, I think it's a little bit too little, too late. 22 Lings on the way right now for Snoop, but he needs those 22 Lings right now. They are going to be popping out, but they're getting surrounded. As soon as they pop out, drones being pulled off the line, never a situation you want to be in as Snoop, but he does have a few to lose before he really starts falling behind. Yeah, this Zergling's doing so much damage right now. And, oh, this is just such a hard position for Snoot. Of course, he's still way up in workers. He's up 12 workers. She needs to find more damage. Scarlet can't settle just for this. She's catching these roaches as they're popping out. These drones trying to get out of that base. Just a little squad of slow zerglings and roaches here trying to defend for Snoot. He's got to reinforce the wall at the front at the same time. Oh, this is such a difficult position, Pei, because we see that these lings are still getting some good damage done inside that in-base natural expansion. There's still 36 lings left alive live and running around, trying to knock down the wall, running around inside the natural expansion. And Scarlet has been able to do some good damage, but she is oh. still behind by a few workers. Snoot just pulled all the roaches away from the front oh. wall. I don't know. He okay, he puts down another Evo chamber just in time. He's holding off in the main base as well. That queen's out. His main base mineral line should be mostly safe. A few more drones will fall. Scarlet microing to the last moment, but the wall off at the front, this is the key. Another Evo chamber goes down on the right, but I think the Zerglings might be able to slip past that. Oh. I guess not. Yeah, it does seem like they're going to have a bit more trouble trying to finish off the job, but 
We'll see whether or not she can make something work a little bit later on. Uh, the Roaches, I mean, they're gonna make it really difficult, I think, for Snoot to, or for Scarlet to continue taking those trades oh, with just pure lings. The Zergling drop in the back, though. He's forgotten about that Overlord. He saw it earlier. Another drop in here, and even just getting oh. one or two more drones is so big because Scarlet has droned up very hard behind this. She found the damage she needed to, and she's actually already up about eight workers, getting four drones here. A fifth okay. one gonna go down as well. Very nice. Okay. Snoot in a hard position. Even getting a Roach Horn of her own up, as well as starting up that lair. Now, Snoot is just continuing to drone behind all this and behind his four Evolution Chamber wall off that he's now stuck with. But uh, the Lings for Scarlet are still alive, and there's still that big threat that Snoot just has to be so careful of, especially with that drop overload that you mentioned still being alive. And we've got uh, another Zergling drop, just trying to be annoying. Snoot's on top of it now, though. He's locked everything up, and... Of course we are watching Snoot. So even when he takes a whole bunch of damage, you see him just claw his way back into a lot of games. He is a defensive master, plays very strong macro styles, and we can see he's just droning on up here, catching up. Scarlet only going for single upgrades, Snoot going for the double upgrades, both range and carapace. So we are gonna be going into a roach war, but uh, definitely gonna be that upgrade advantage for Snoot as things progress. Yeah, it seems like that's gonna be the case. Well. Scarlet just gonna make the most of those links, try and take a fourth expansion or a fourth base right now. We see that the income graph is starting to heavily favor Scarlet as all that damage that she had done earlier on is really starting to add up. It really goes to show you even just that small little worker advantage can really play a big impact, especially when you're forcing workers off of mining for long periods of time. And now building up to capitalize off that Scarlet. I mean, we knew she was a bit ahead, but look at this supply lead now. She, because she's not going for the double upgrades, yeah, they'll, they'll kind of gain value over many, many engagements. But Scarlet's just going for numbers and economy. She knows she's got this scary pack of Zerglings out there, which can keep denying bases, make it very hard for Snoot to take a fourth. And meanwhile, Scarlet goes for the gold base. If she can get mining up on that, she's just going to outnumber Snoot so much. Even if he's got some carapace upgrades on top of her, that shouldn't really make too much of a difference. And he's building Zerglings now with Zergling speed about to finish. Uh -huh. I, I think it's just to deal with the Zerglings of Scarlet, but that is such a weird choice right now. They're going to be really bad in a frontal fight. Yeah, now Scarlet does have few, or sorry, more roaches than Snoot right now, although there are a couple of Ravagers out for both of these players. They're going to be playing a big impact to those Corrosive Vials, but all of the upgrades for both of these players finishing up all around the same time. We'll see how the engagement ends up going in terms of the positioning, which can really play the biggest impact in these. Snoot realizing he might lose that Roach one at the front is already building another one in the back, funnily enough. Scarlet's gonna go in for the engagement. She actually lands a couple of corrosive bars on that left flank. Snoot trying to move forward here. He does have the closer reinforcements, but the numbers are in Scarlet's favor. Snoot trying to micro forward to get that Ravager, but it pulled back and Scarlet oh. got an amazing concave. Snoot kind of microing his way into the convex there. Much better surface area for Scarlet, much better numbers. And with the equal attack upgrades, the most important upgrades, Scarlet just crushes through. Oh, the Roach Warren going down is going to prevent Snoop from making any more reinforcements. He doesn't. Really, he has another Roach Warren way back inside of his main base. His Scarlet's going to be able to take out some of the Evolution Chambers, start to whittle away at this army, but it's just about how many Roaches she has been building up and continuing to build up. It's starting to snowball. And that gold base has started mining behind this. Scarlet's income is out of control, as if the army wasn't scary enough already. She is reinforcing a lot, uh, a lot heavier than Snoot right now, and yeah, it's just a numbers game. Snoot microing his heart out, trying to hang on, but it looks like he just took a little bit too much damage earlier in this game. Scarlet knew just how to close it out. And at the end of the day, Scarlet showing a very good game one here, using all of that lava off those three hatcheries to just smash Snoot. Yeah, and I mean, we came into this series talking about how Snoot had this winning history versus Scarlet recently, and how Snoot was doing so well, but GG gets called Scarlet saying, nope, this is a tournament setting, not some ladder game. Let me show you what's boss. Scarlet is unafraid to pull out those aggressive builds. She's building a reputation for herself in the last year or so with a lot of Zergling aggression, a lot of kind of strange upgraded Zergling builds and all sorts of rushes in this matchup. And it's what makes her such a dangerous player. She is unafraid to play a different style. Whereas Snoot, usually sticking to one kind of format. It's 
get a third base, and get a lot of roaches, and try to play out that style. You know, it's really funny because I was talking with Snoot. We always see Snoot in these late game stages. I know, uh, of course, the desk was talking about this as well, but he was saying, you know, usually I don't actually like to go to those super late game situations in ZVZ and specifically. It just always seems to end up that way. <laughs> uh, he actually says that he prefers yeah. some of the early game stuff, but it seems like. I don't know. Do you, do you think he should just be trying to go to that late game and trying to play a little bit safe? Or it's really odd because I feel like Snoot is definitely a player who's, who's gifted in the mid to late game. Yeah. Uh, but if there's one weakness, and I was analyzing some of his vods, uh, you know, his series against Cham from from Yen Shiping before I came here, and uh, I really feel like if there's one weakness in his Zerg versus Zerg, it's normally he's not good at capitalizing on his leads and finishing off games. Um, often around the 40, 35 drone roach stage where you build a lot of roaches, you often push, but you don't necessarily go all in with it, especially at this level of play. He, he doesn't really commit when he should commit, mm -hmm. but he'll, he'll kind of not drone hard enough either. So sometimes he gets caught in this middle ground and you see players kind of come back and get back into the game and it goes a lot longer than it really should. But in this series, that isn't really what we saw. I mean, he was he was kind of behind. He never had a chance to claw his way back in. So I think the next game, he just kind of refreshes his mindset. He says, OK, I got caught out by a big surprise Ling Flood. I was being greedy. I mean, what did he have? Two queens at the front? Absolutely yeah. no damage. If he's got a Spine Crawler, it's a different story. But without that, you're just not going to be able to get those uh, that Zergling count down before they break the wall. Good adaptations from Snoot in that game, and Beelan's trying to get that Evolution Chamber wall in. But like you said, when you get caught that off guard, even with the most amazing Evolution Chamber walls and queens and the transfuses, everything almost going as perfectly as possible, it's just a bit too difficult to actually catch back up in that situation, so. Yeah. I mean, even if he had a faster Roach Warren, right? If he mm -hmm. could start building Roaches the moment that wall starts getting attacked, because that took like yeah. a minute, maybe a minute, <laughs> over yeah. a minute for the wall he to break. He bought a lot of time. <laughs> he bought a substantial amount of time. It's like a 12 evolution chamber wall or something. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, unfortunately, the Roach Warren only started when the Zerglings moved out, so it wasn't quite enough. Mm. Well, Ascension Ire is going to be the next map, and uh, this is pretty different from Proxima, where you can easily establish those three bases without having to worry about defending multiple locations, but I feel like we tend to see a fast three base play on this map regardless. Sorry, what map was it? Uh, Ascension to Aya. Ah, Ascension to Aya, yeah. I mean, this is definitely one where, I mean, we saw Stefano and Nurtio. We've seen mm -hmm. pretty much every ZVZ series recently. We always see this come out in the first couple maps because it is quite straightforward. But the third bases are spread a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this is a map where we could see something like that sneaky little move that Nurtio pulled out earlier against Odyssey uh, on Odyssey, where he sneaks the six Zerglings around the edge of the map comes in and cancels that third base when it goes down. Uh, definitely a map where I do expect it probably to be standard kind of hatchery first openings into that just three base Ling Bane skirmishes. Mm -hmm. um, but I expect both players to contest the middle of the map a little bit more. Maybe Snoot to play a bit more defensive, add the Queens in a bit earlier and say, you know what, I've got the, the, the more solid defense. I'll, I'll give up the map control mm -hmm. and just drone a little bit harder. Absolutely. I think as we saw in that last game, Scarlet is more likely than Snoot, I think, to get really aggressive in this particular game and to try and end the game a little bit earlier on if she's going to toss out a lot of that early aggression. I mean, yeah. she always credits a Bly and of course she lives with <laughs> no regret. So, I mean, her Ling aggression is always going to be on point. There's all the macro Zergs out there and they're just, they're crying. They're like, I remember <laughs> when Scarlet just built drones and she wouldn't attack until she had 70. There's all these bad influences. She's with the wrong <laughs> crowd now. You know, she's been hanging out with Bly for a couple of years. Now she's like living with no regret. There's just... Code S, GSL, code S, no regret. <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, and, and he did it through Zerg versus Zerg as well, yeah. actually. Beat Impact yeah. twice to qualify for Code S. <laughs> and I mean, when you have someone like that as your house manager teaching you the ropes of how to be so amazing at ZVZ, <laughs> Of course, you can only expect the best Ling Banling Micro. <laughs> you might be going a little bit far saying teaching. <laughs> maybe maybe giving a little bit of a spark of inspiration, a spark. <laughs> but uh, hopefully uh, she hasn't been learning all of her fundamentals. I love you, Jake, if you're out there watching. Uh, no regret, of course. Uh, infamous player with his own specific yeah. style of aggressive known Starcraft. For, known for just owning up to the fact that he all-ins every <laughs> single game. There will be Dropper Lords, you know, Elevatoring Zerglings. There won't be more than 30 drones. There will be a Baneling Nest every single game. Uh, that's pretty fun. But uh, I think that we are going to be... We're having a bit of a chair replacement yeah. right now. Just uh, I think there's just an issue with Scarlet's chair, of course. 
if your chair is at the wrong height, sometimes the, the suspension or something is off, so you can't get it the right height or angle, or it doesn't support your back properly, mm -hmm. it can actually throw you off a lot, especially because you're used to your arms hanging at a specific height uh, over your mouse and keyboard. So if you're suddenly at a desk, and, you know, you're sitting a foot higher or lower than you're not uh, used to, it's actually terrible. I've played many <laughs> tournaments back in the old days where you'd have some fold-out chair, your table's up around your shoulder height, yep. you're kind of trying to micro, and everything, you know, you're just running packs of Zerglings into Banelings, all that sort of stuff. So mm -hmm. making sure everything's perfect for Scarlet. Yeah, absolutely. I think my worst experience with the chair is playing on a bar stool. No back support, no armrest, no nothing. You're sitting actually like about the same level as the desk, and yeah. it's just uncomfortable. It just feels absolutely terrible. So having oh. perfect settings, very, very important. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to get ready to hop into the series as soon as uh, Scarlet is reset up with everything. But uh, I think that we're going to be taking a look at the replay for that previous game. Uh, we can see over here that this is around the time that Scarlet was trying to make that big bust in. But I mean, I really do have to commend Snoot on being able to get that wall in up so well. Yeah. Just very decisive push here from Scarlet. Uh, I like this. Uh, you know, it takes decisiveness to know how to use an advantage in Zerg vs. Zerg. And, and we didn't really see it, but just the gold base behind that, like, her income was out of control. She didn't need to kill Snoot there. She just needed to keep him off her fourth base. And she was going to be able to overwhelm. Uh, you know, there was only a slight delay between her plus one and his plus one range. And even if he gets ahead in, in plus two by a few seconds, she can fall back, wait for her plus two to catch up, and then re-engage. Uh, you know, plus two carapace, such an expensive upgrade. It's so far down the line. Even though it's a big one, she would have had so many numbers by that point, it just wouldn't have mattered. So it maybe could be a question, Snoot's decision to go for the double upgrades. Uh, the plus one carapace, it gives you a small edge, but I mean, it turned out we have all the information. We can say, well, you really didn't need that upgrade. You needed a few more roaches. Probably didn't need Zergling speed. Mm -hmm. Just roaches, just roaches, as many as possible. But he, of course, had no idea. If you deal with a rush like that, you're like, am I up 10 drones? Am I down 10 drones? Oh, you have to so just hard guess. To tell. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you just have to have such an amazing game sense to be able to tell that kind of stuff in that situation. And I wonder how Snoot's going to be feeling after this. I mean, being down 0-1, Snoot is definitely one of the players that I always kind of paint as a more emotionally invested player. I mean, if you ever take a look at his Team Liquid fan club thread, he, whenever he has those really difficult losses, he's always posting there saying, man, I'm so sorry I disappointed my fans. I mean, he's definitely one of the people that always feels like He's actually disappointing his fans a lot of the time when he's losing, not just himself. I, I don't think it's unfair to say the hardest working uh, player consistently over the, the history yeah. of StarCraft 2. You know, a lot of us look up to him, um, not just for grinding those online cups, but it's just generally every day, you know, he's always uh, identifying his problems. Uh, you know, he might be struggling a certain matchup, a certain map, and he'll sit there for a day and just analyze yeah. away. He'll study his opponents and figure out everything. And when you put that much work and as many thousands and thousands of hours into a passion as Snoot has with StarCraft, you're going to be very upset when you lose. You're going to be very mm -hmm. happy when you win. And he really does uh, wear his emotion on his sleeve sometimes. But over the years, he's learned to control the tilt, he doesn't yeah. get thrown off too badly when he loses a game as much. There were times where he used to kind of, I feel like, go a bit off balance. Absolutely. And I mean, even I think I was talking with him, he was saying, you know, I didn't really get too much sleep last night. I was just trying to, just laying in bed, trying to fall asleep, which I think is also another big mm. problem that a lot of players have. They just start stressing out about, man, you know, I made it to the playoffs, but I need to make it further. I want to qualify for BlizzCon, and I have to have an amazingly good result at this tournament. And yeah. uh, I think actually he was asking me, yeah, can you can you go, please go get me two monsters? Uh, <laughs> just I, Or just some sort of energy drink. I need some form of energy to wake up. All right. Well, good to see uh, the players wanting to get G'd here because we are going into this next map number two and spawning up here in the top left-hand side, our team Liquid Zerg. It is Snoot. I believe Snooter is the correct pronunciation, but it's one of those things that's kind of like, like Idra, Idra. You uh, just kind of go with the flow. All right, and spine down here in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we have the Red Zerg player from Team Expert. It's Scarlet. I think my favorite pronunciation of Snoot's name is Jams or Yams. Oh, yeah, Yams. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, his first name is Jens, J-E-N-S, but... It's always, it's always fun to just call him Yams or Jams. Jans Waller Asgard. <laughs> Okay, so we were talking a bit about Ascension Ire, how 
you can see those faster third expansions, but again, we're really going to be looking to see, does Scarlet opt to get aggressive? I'd yeah. be a bit surprised if Snoot gets a bit aggressive, but he does sometimes end up doing that. Yeah, I mean, he, he knows how to play. It's, it's uh, you know, is it particularly aggressive? No, but mm -hmm. the standard Zerg versus Zerg he will play, which involves attacking your opponent with a lot of Ling Bane mm -hmm. in order to create space for your yourself, you know, and if they're not defending properly, you'll kill a lot of drones and you might just win the game outright. He's definitely someone who plays that style in a very standard, typical way. He just never overcommits to the Ling Bane. Scarlet, though, you know, we've seen in that last game, she does some special tactics. She pulls out some of these weird builds. And what I wouldn't be surprised to see for her is maybe something like, oh, I'm going to skip the Baneling Nest, drop a fast evolution chamber, get plus one melee. And that technically leaves her very open to a big committed Ling Bane attack. But against Snoot, you say, yeah, he might put on some pressure, but rarely will he really commit to it. So I feel I can get away with that greed. And these sort of edges are things which have, in the past, given Zerg opponents a bit of an edge over Snoot in a series. I feel like that's a great way to just describe a lot of what Scarlet does in her gameplay. She is the kind of player that will take a lot of risks to try and get these big edges. And yeah, they will leave her very vulnerable to some big attacks or some big Ling Floods and everything. But she says, no, I'm actually just gonna play a little bit greedy because if I get away with this greed, I'm gonna be so far ahead with that on yeah. top of my very, very immaculate and, mechanics. And it's super calculated as well, you know? It's, it's like there's only usually one attack and it has to be precisely executed to take advantage of that. And she might take one or two of these risks in the early game. And if there's a player who never gives up a lead, it is Scarlet. <laughs> like, there are players out there who we know as people who throw games, who, you know, they, they sometimes give up a lead. And, you know, it's not that often, but it happens. Scarlet, it is so rare to see her give up an advantage. When she gets ahead, she will doggedly hang on to that edge and she will just safely go to the next tech tree, tech up to the next uh, tier of units over and over again. All right, we see the first couple of links for Scarlet encountering Snoots and saying, oh, you know, this actually is not going to be working out. Immediately has to back up over there. But third expansion will go Ooh. up safely, it seems like, for Snoot for now. No Roach Warren or Baneling Nest for both players. Ooh. They're both just going for a big flood of Zerglings. Only now does a very late Baneling Nest go down for Snoot. So both players just going for multiple queens on the defense as a bit of an anchor. <laughs> um, you know, big, strong defensive sort of uh, formation there. And a lot of Zerglings to just pressure and keep their opponent at home. So both are a little bit worried right now about the opponent having Banelings. But with these Queens, they're very well set up. Yeah, it looks like some of these drones may end up falling over here. Snoot finding some okay damage. Killing off two workers this early on is really, really nice. But Scarlet now has overwhelming numbers over the third expansion. It's going to start to take some damage over here. Snoot needs to have a response soon. Yeah, Snoot, he doesn't have those Banelings ready. The Queen's waddling over, but they're so slow. Get your running shoes on, Queens. They need your help. The Zerglings of Snoot taking a few bad angles there. Scarlet taking a couple of nice trades there, only fighting when she has the Link Superiority. Yeah, really, really nicely played over there by Scarlet as, uh, yeah, just being able to buy herself a lot of time, killing off some of those links, just taking efficient trades. I think it's been really helpful. And she needs to because, again, she did not get that Bailey Nest uh, earlier on, and she still doesn't have a Bailey Nest. She's getting a Roach Horn. It's exactly what you were saying before, Pig, taking a bit of that risk and yeah. going straight into the Roaches. Yeah, those defensive Banelings aren't really doing anything for Snoot right now. All they did was push the Zerglings home of Scarlet, but she was she was done with that aggression anyway. Now she's got her third up and established. Both players relatively close on the workers, but oh my, a lot more drones coming out for Snoot. And meanwhile, Scarlet has been banned up that money and there she, she goes she's actually starting to build a few more drones now overlords and roaches i thought she was just going to build roaches but uh i guess she didn't have the overlords ready so yeah she's just going to go evolution chamber she's going to mac her up and man snoot knows how to build workers <laughs> he definitely does but gonna be losing a few over there as these lings are starting to find some bits and pieces of damage Scarlet also has some really nice micro over here, keeping these lings alive as that Baneling just chases them around in every which direction. But ooh, Snoot ooh. with his own counterattack. Snoot's looking so good right now. He has squeezed out so many more workers behind this. Finding wow. these equal drone kills. Oh, even more drone kills for him. He only lost three at home. He got four there. And he's got 10 more drones in the production tab. The only thing I'm worried about now is Snoot getting carried away with that worker count because that's... That's, um, actually, no, he's, he's got 12 more roaches. Oh. Sorry, just misreading the production tab there. Good casting, pig. <laughs> it's all good. I mean, Snoot is the kind of player that you have to be sometimes worried about that. He's definitely dropped maps, even in this event, this particular tournament, just because he gets a really good lead, and then he just takes it a little bit too far, mm. starts to over-drone or over-tech, and just dies to some kind of counterattack or something early on. So 
Have to be a little bit careful about that, but he's doing a great job, it looks like, this game so far. Oh, as our observer just pointed out, a lot of Zerglings on the production tab as well. So Snoot here, he's got a lot of Roaches out there. are going to start to move out. It looks like he wants to commit super hard to this, even making some Ravages. And he's just going to rally a massive Roach Ravager Zergling. Probably won't start droning until right around the point as he's hitting Scarlet. And only at that point will he add drones in behind this. So he wants those Zerglings to be quickly reinforcing this push. And Scarlet, seeing this, she's over drone. She's up to 59 workers. She's way down on army supply. She's only got a couple of Queens and Ravagers morphing here. The Roaches of Snoot jumping on top, focusing down these Queens and Ravagers. Oh, Snoot with the perfect timing attack, using that early worker lead, transforming into a massive army, and he is running away with this game. Oh, Scarlet at the back foot, and now is trying to defend inside of her own natural expansion. It seems like she's going to be able to have to pull off some of the drones to help defend. The more roaches are going to be popping out, but even the corrosive vial is going to make it hard for these drones to effectively defend. More roaches coming out at the third expansion, but... It just doesn't seem like it's going to be enough right now, Pig. No, I don't think so. The corrosive bile is being chained on those eggs as well, so those cocoons will be going down in the near future. All the drones have oh. gone down in the natural. GG gets called, and it looks like Snoot is going to be able to tie up this series one to one. Just really catching Scarlet, I don't know, off guard by surprise. What do you think happened there? Yeah, I mean, Snoot there, he just seemed to handle those Ling skirmishes really well. Uh, he ended up catching out, I guess, a few more of her Zerglings and those runbys. He started sneaking in, getting a couple workers here, a couple workers there. He was very confident with those Banelings at home, whereas Scarlet seemed just felt a little bit more pressured, uh, you know, to, to drone a little bit slower there. So Snoot took that advantage in the work account. And uh, very decisively, he just stopped at, what, 46 workers, I believe it was, built about 12 roaches, a lot of Zerglings. The typical way to win if you've got a lead in the early stages, just run over to the other side of the map and hit them. And uh, Scarlet, she was a bit too greedy, didn't have the information. And uh, yeah, good, good play from Snoo, very decisive. Yeah, we'll see how things go. We are going to be hopping next into Abyssal Reef which is a, a bit of a fun map. I've seen a lot of kind of early er, uh, Ling aggression on this map that can really, really start to do some substantial damage. Yeah. But I think that partially lends itself to, I guess, it's difficult to wall yourself in and kind of get those evolution terminal wall offs that you would do on, say, Proxima Station and everything. So we can see some early Ling aggression start to do some damage, canceling third expansion and such. What do you usually see on this map? I think you're, you're spot on. You know, you don't really wall off, but the interesting thing is that choke point at the front of the natural is very hard to get up, even once you take the rocks down. Uh, but in, in the early stages, you're talking about 8, 10, 12 roaches. You can't really sit there and kill those, those rocks. It just yeah. takes too much time. So funneling up that choke point becomes very awkward. And as a result, you will sometimes see players push their greed a little bit more or uh, rather stay on heavier Ling Bane for a bit longer because they know they can't use their roaches aggressively as easily. So it's something where players do end up playing, uh, you know, link speed openings usually, but there's a lot of different styles that can come out. Some players love to go for mutalisks on this map mm -hmm. uh, after the Roach stage, but lots of options available to the players. Absolutely. Well, as the game gets set up, uh, we're going to see, again, there's a lot on the line for both of these players. Scarlet pretty far behind in the WCS point standings and really needs a big victory. I mean, potentially, maybe just wants to try and win this entire tournament if she wants a good shot at getting into BlizzCon yeah. and to get a spot there. But uh, that's going to be a very, very difficult thing. And she has to start by winning this series and closing this out. You know, yeah, realistically, I think, uh, you know, she's she wants to, to be able to take down Snoot. Of course, Snoot's up there at rank number nine at the moment. Scarlet is down at rank number 15 with mm -hmm. just a thousand points. I mean, if she can get just a couple hundred more points, 200 more points, and she, you know, is on par with Snoot at rank number nine, a much healthier looking uh, placing there. Mm -hmm. Scarlet is indeed the best. <laughs> a lot of fans out there supporting Scarlet here. Yeah, such a long-standing player. She's been around for a very, very long time, been living yeah. in Korea, training over there diligently every single day. Uh, Snoot, training in Europe, of course, gets that EU ZVZ practice that is so highly respected. Mm. He's definitely going to be, I think, more comfortable in those, those straight-up roach games, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he's played those a thousand times, but Scarlet here, she's showing she's comfortable in these volatile situations as well. So both players going to have to dig deep here. Tying it up 1-1, one, one. down here in the bottom right-hand side, representing Team Liquid, it is Snoot.
And up in the top left-hand corner of the map, we have the Red Zerg player from Team Expert. It's Scarlet. Someone who uh, I think also was saying had some troubles getting some good sleep. And it's always a little bit rough when you are in the playoffs and yeah. you're playing a little bit later on in the day and you just kind of think, man, feeling really tired, but I got to just keep practicing. I got to stay warmed up. I have to make it to the end of the day because that's one of my matches and I have to be on point. That is the moment that you have to be incredibly on point. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if these plays make it through to tomorrow, they're going to need to be switched on all day long because mm -hmm. we're going to have games going the whole time. But <laughs> for today, this is the one best of five that counts. It is what will progress them through to the round of eight here at WCS Valencia. And in this intense situation, Snoot is putting everything on the line. He is going for a 13 gas 12 pool. This is a super fast all in attack. He isn't even building a queen. He is going directly across that map and he's probably going to be dropping a baneling nest mm -hmm. instead of a queen. Oh my gosh, this is the most all in you can go with this attack. He is just going to be hitting the front, not even trying to hide it. And then he's going to morph some banelings and just keep going for broke. There's only going to be a queen coming in in a few more seconds behind this. Yeah, just starting up now. So that delays his inject so long. It's all about every Zergling getting value. If he loses two or three Zerglings for free, this rush is pretty much over. Okay, he is going to be going straight after that natural expansion, and Scarlet is not going to cancel it. She's going to use it to try and buy time. She gets up a spine crawler up in the main base, which Snoot is not actually going to be able to attack if he just keeps going after the natural expansion hatchery. This is about sacrificing the hatchery in order to get up defenses and stay alive. Absolutely right now. Scarlet has pulled off that gas mining for the moment. Most of her drones, she's trying to buy some time. She wants to let that queen get out of that hatchery. She wants a few more lava to pop out. Ooh, does Ooh. snipe down one of Snoot's circling's good micro from Scarlet. She knows these numbers count. She spotted the banelings as well. Her spine crawler finishing on the top of the ramp. And Snoot just going to back off for the moment. He started droning up behind this. Uh -huh. Because Scarlet didn't try to defend this, Snoot doesn't need to necessarily push any deeper. He'd love some more damage, but I think seeing that spine, he's just going to guard this low ground. Okay, Scarlet has that first queen out. If she can get a second queen, then, I mean, any kind of danger that she was in about the Lynx flooding into the main base is going to be significantly reduced just because they can hold position at that ramp and target fire down any, uh, the Bane Lynx that, or sorry, the, yeah, the Bane Lynx that try and run up the ramp. But for now, she's going to be defending on just a single queen. Snoot playing so safe, he realizes she can be getting her own link speed and Bane Lingness. So he sent a few Zerglings home here. They're sitting on the ramp, ready to morph into Bane Lings the moment she runs out. So if she manages to get around his Zerglings and Bane Lings that are guarding this territory, he's got the defense at home. He's got multiple layers of security here. Okay, it looks like some of these Lings are going to be darting up and down and saying, nope, time to leave and uh, leave those Bane Lings around. But the Queens for Scarlet getting so aggressive off of Creep. Just trying to push back those banelings. Now, behind this, Snoot did grab that natural expansion that our lovely observer already pointed out. Uh, we'll see if he can defend this. He's already gone back into droning and is going to be taking a bit of a drone lead for now. Did spot these Zerglings coming around the side of the map. Snoot did. So he's still zoning at the front and he's looking to try and catch these Zerglings on the back. But Scarlet there, good micro so far. Ooh. Picks off a Baneling for two Zerglings, splits off another Zergling. Two Banelings for three Zerglings. Great trade here for Scarlet. Putting some pressure on Snoot, not finding any purchase back on the other side of the map with his Zerglings. Yeah, Snoot trying to do a little bit of damage with his own Zerglings on the other side of the map, but Scarlet's Queens were very much on top of it. The problem is Scarlet's natural expansion is so much further delay. It's not even just about the mining that happens there. It's also about the lack of larva. Snoot having 31 drones, and Scarlet trying to play a bit of catch-up, but still struggling while also trying to get up her own defenses and uh, just obstacle for a faster third. Mm, bit of a pressure coming in here for Scarlet. Ooh. Gonna try and equalize that way. Does take out the Banelings there of Snoot. Snoot needs to pull back all of the Zergans to support these Queens. Extra Queen does pop. Looks like he will be able to fend this off for now, but actually no, a bunch of Zerglings survive. And they're gonna spot the third base. That's a cancel right there. Scarlet mm. getting a bit of damage to tie this up. Yeah, and with her own third expansion on the way safely, then she may be able to start pulling a little bit further ahead if she can continue to maintain this kind of lead. But more Lings trying to stream on forward. Ooh, nice uh, attempt at trying wow. to save that drone, but does get sniped off. You know, this isn't technical build order refinement right here. This isn't strategic 
strategic choice. There's so much as Scarlet just looking for every edge she can get. Those Zerglings doing that while the Queen sniped the Overlord. Snoot was supply blocked and floating a lot of money for a moment there. She slowed him down, picking off extra drones. He's being forced to take his third in this awkward location. Scarlet, I feel like she was a little bit behind after those openings, but now she's finding her way back into this game. Yeah, both these players going for their lair around the same time. The Roach Horn's also going up around the same time. But as you said, small little edges that Scarlet is finding. Um, does seem like Snoo was able to kind of start to equalize in terms of that work count, even climbing a little bit ahead for now while the next round of drones come out for both of these players. But we are going to be going into that late game macro Roach versus Roach War. Snoot solid on the defense with the additional queens, which he loves so, so much. And both players will be going to that roach stage, as you said, Ravi. Of course, Scarlet, definitely the one who had characterized as someone who's more comfortable going for muters, more comfortable changing it up, trying to go for different things. Snood, I see, as someone who's going to go roaches into infestors with a lot of ravages pretty much every game and really look to try and dominate in that mid-game phase or late mid-game phase. Not necessarily wanting to go to Hive as Zerg vs Zerg gets absolutely wild and crazy at that stage with the number of units you have available. Things like Vipers can come in, Ultralisk tech or Broodlord tech can eventually be added into the equation. But this Roach stage is, uh, is what it's all about. And I mean, Snoot's now down a couple of workers, but he was ahead for a little bit. So I'd say overall, these players are pretty much neck and neck. Yeah, we can see that the income graph is going to be reflecting the, I guess, some of the drone pulls that we've been seeing, as well as some of the worker leads that have been drifting a little bit more in terms of Scarlet's favor. But it, I am really interested about this more forward third expansion. This was almost something that was forced out by Scarlet by continuously harassing that third expansion, the more traditional location. So Snood eventually just kind of caves in and says, I just got to get my third expansion down. I'm going to go for the more forward one. How do you feel about that? I think it works out okay because he is in this kind of decent position, but it's definitely a bit more exposed, especially the high ground above it. If Roaches and Ravages get up there, you're going to force those drones to be pulled off the line, pick off a lot of kills quite easily. Um, but it does make the other bases a little bit easier to take behind it. Snoot now pushing out of the map. He's only at 46 workers. This is something I talked about earlier. Sometimes Snoot does kind of get stuck on that low 40s drone count and just masses up a crazy amount of roaches. And I've even seen him mm. dive too deep. Both armies passing each other. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're about to see some craziness happen here, Fear Dragon. Both players didn't see each other moving across the map. And I mean, Snoot here, he's got a big roach army. So does Scarlet. Both of them just jumping on top of each other's rally. Oh, Snoot gets on top of the roach count. That's so important. He's not letting these roaches build up in number. The drone's being pulled off the line by both players. This is absolute madness. It seems like Scarlet is able to do some nice economic damage and really isn't getting, uh, having to deal with it. quite as many roaches popping out, whereas Scarlet seems to be getting up some defenses with the drone pull. She's losing a lot more workers, but she is starting to stabilize. In the meanwhile, taking out the natural expansion hatchery, Snoot's army on the other side of the map is starting to get cleaned up. Both players so close right now. The army supply is almost identical for both players. And uh, as things start to settle down, we'll try and see who is ahead and who is behind. The supply definitely in Snoot's favor right now, but losing that hatchery, a lot of these workers are not mining. They're all stacked up on top of each other on this third base, unable to find mineral patches to work from. Both players very even in roaches. 23 for Snoot, 17 for Scarlet. The one thing we can be sure of is if Snoot gets that hatchery rebuilt, he is going to be way ahead on that income. Yeah, for right now, if you're just sitting on two bases, having 51 workers, it's great, but you can't really uh, utilize all of the workers quite as effectively. I mean, the main bases are definitely going to start mining out pretty soon. So Scarlet, with that third expansion, she can re-drone back up. She maybe still has a chance to come back in this, but it is going to be a bit difficult as Snoot starts to make his way across the map, looking to get some damage on. Queen's going to help out quite a bit with the defense over here, though. Oh, but it's a one-two punch. A couple of roaches on the side, but Scarlet, well prepared, mm. blocks that one out. Snoot just looking for these edges, coming around the different angles. Scarlet, she's realizing she's down in the army supply and she's taking a little bit of a risk trying to drone up, knowing that's her path back into this game. She needs to close that worker gap, use those three bases. Both players now going for plus two range at almost identical timings as they realize they probably can't kill each other just yet. Snoot with a definite lead. Yeah, both these players being quite resilient and not falling prey to any of the kind of counter aggressions. So they are looking toward the later stages of the game. And as this gets closer and closer to max down, any kind of leads in the army supply that one player has is going to become a small window where you max yeah. out and then suddenly I can't make my army any bigger. I have to do something now. 
Otherwise, my opponent's also just going to max out, and suddenly my lead is somewhat gone. Snoot definitely going to be looking to do something before it gets <laughs> to that stage. His Roach is coming out. His Hatchery, unfortunately, getting gooped up there. He's going to, of course, freeze the production for about 30 seconds. Roaches and Ravages moving forward. Snoot has his own fourth hatchery, almost halfway done. Ooh, he gets a few overlords. That's always nice. Going to go in for a bit of an engagement. Not sure of the numbers here, though. He's going to use these corrosive piles to zone, and we begin the dance. The dance, of course, just dodging each other's corrosive piles, looking to create space, and Snoot clearing up Scarlet's map vision. This is really useful. The more he pushes back her vision, the more times he can split roaches off and run those into her mineral lines while distracting her at the front. Absolutely, and especially on Abyssal Reef, when you start getting up to fourth ex uh, fourth bases, fifth bases, that's when the roach counterattacks, even small little squadrons can really start to do damage. But here we go. We might be seeing a big engagement, just both players teasing at them, and Snoot pushing really aggressively into Scarlet's territory, but Scarlet setting up with a really nice concave. Some good Corrosa Biles also landing on a ton of the roaches. He's going in full frontal right now forcing this engagement before the upgrades can finish for either player. His Roach is moving forward, dodging the Biles masterfully. He managed to force his Concave right there. Scarlet having to dodge the Biles ended up in the inferior position. She was down in numbers already. And it looks like Snoot here with this decisive push. He's getting a lot of worker kills. I think he might just barely be able to break through. The oh. Cocoon's there. They're all getting battered and bruised. Only a few Roaches and a Queen left standing. Oh man, it seems like Snoot is starting to make progress. He may be able to take out Scarlet's third expansion. And with his own fourth on the way, that's actually now finished up, he's going to take a definitive lead, especially with that 50 worker count lead uh, that he can actually utilize much, much better than Scarlet. This is a game where Snoot, you know, he's managed to hang on through all of the chaos and get that lead from that aggression in that early game. I love the way he's chosen to play this one. And now he's just very decisive, not overcommitting. Uh -huh. Scarlet knows there's no way back into that. She's mining about half the resources. She's got to tap out. GG. Snoot is going to be going up two to one. Now at match point, one game away from moving on to the round of eight. He can almost taste victory. You know, this would be a big win for Snoot. We said it's, it's going to be a pretty even match. We're not sure how it'll go. Scarlet much higher in Zerg versus Zerg rating than Snoot right now in Oligulac, but Snoot historically, you know, he, he has done pretty decently against Scarlet. Uh, of course, the only time they played recently, though, was at the start of this year, and uh, he managed to 3-0 Scarlet, but she'd been awake all night playing other tournaments and qualifiers. So <laughs> this is kind of the first time that I think they've had a meaningful competitive match in like mm -hmm. something like two years, maybe more than that. So it really is interesting to see them both sizing each other up here. And as we continue into Odyssey next map, I'm very curious to see how they're going to change things up. Yeah, I think it's also really cool because both of these players have given each other a lot of respect. I mean, Snoot was saying, yeah, you know, I've been winning a lot versus her, but I haven't been playing good tournament competitive matches on the mm. same server in an offline setting, so anything could happen. She's actually very, very good. And of course, Scarlet doing the same, giving a lot of respect to Snoot. So it's really cool, and you can see that they are giving each other that respect yeah. in the game. Well. And it's, it's always interesting to see what happens throughout these series, because there's the scales going on in both players' heads. They're measuring up the odds in terms of the build orders. And mm -hmm. we saw Snoot in that last game say, this is a relatively short rush distance map where I can do this Zergling rush. This early pool cancels the hatchery and just transitions on out of it and just takes a small lead off that aggression. But he made things awkward for Scarlet. And remember, she did a lot of good things to get back in that game. You know, she canceled the third base. She picked off a couple drones. She forced him to take a bit of an awkward base. But throughout that, bit of back and forth, Snoot always finds a way to squeeze in about five more drones than his opponent. You kind of think the opponent's bringing it back, <laughs> and then you always look back at the work account, and you're like, hey, when did they squeeze out? When did that happen? <laughs> okay, well, here we go. We're hopping into it. Game number four, match point. We're going to be starting down here in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, top of the blue Zerg player, one game away from moving on to the round of eight. Give it up for Team Liquid Snoot. Looking a little bit tired there. He's going to have to fight against that. Of course, his opponent up here in the top left-hand side of Odyssey, representing Team Expert, it is Scarlet.
almost becoming a bit of a battle for endurance as ZVZ is a very unforgiving matchup. If you are feeling tired, it well, it doesn't matter. You got to yeah. play on point every second because you can fall behind in a second. A single mistake can be fatal in this matchup. Absolutely, and it looks like Snoot here is going to be opening up with a very safe mm -hmm. opening. He did something aggressive. A lot of players like to open aggressive and then follow that up with greed. Snoot opens up aggressive in the previous game and decides to follow it up with the most safe thing that he can possibly do. You know, there are a few very quick Ling Bane attacks you can do off this. You know, you've still got the expansion, but uh, you do it off maybe 18, 19 workers. Not really something that's down Snoot's alley. I was talking to him about it a bit, and he was saying that, you know, he doesn't feel it works against top-tier opponents. And I am sure, as you were saying, Ravi, he's <laughs> respecting Scarlet. He knows she's going to be prepared for that sort of stuff. So very likely he just uses it to be solid against anything she can throw his way. Yeah, and I always love that kind of weird metagame that ends up happening, where, or the mind game that ends up happening, where you go for a cheese, and it's almost like there's this weird tendency for your opponent to immediately be like, well, you're going to cheese me. Well, I'm going to cheese you <laughs> back, OK? Let's see how you feel about it. And Snoot just kind of preempting and saying, no, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let you do that. I'm not even gonna give you a chance. And on the other hand as well, I like the bravery from Scarlet, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice to see her. Fearless. Just, just like, hatch first, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine, I'm not afraid. I wasn't afraid of anything. I was barely behind that last game after your rush. I, I got what, 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 you know, what I need. Mm -hmm. And um, interestingly, her Overlord pattern, yeah, she did scout the north side of the map looking for extra Zerglings uh, mm -hmm. with her second Overlord. And she does build six Zerglings, so we're probably going to see those flower out onto the map around her base, check for any sneaky Banelings or Zerglings coming in. Yeah, pretty big Banelings um, coming out over here for Snoot. Uh, curious if he's going to start utilizing this. He's only more making links. links right now. We'll, we'll Two see more when that... queens, though. Yeah. Two more queens. So and that's, a, def that's a defensive setup, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well. Both these players definitely respecting each other and not wanting to let this game end nice and early on. I mean, Snoot can taste victory and... Scarlet knows that defeat is near if she uh, even lets a couple lings get too much damage done. Spinecrawler going down for Scarlet. Okay, this is this wow. is some extra level defense. Do you think that she's just gonna end up skipping the Baneliness going straight into a Roach Horn again? She very mm. well may. Uh, this is a very curious move. Two more queens on the way here for Scarlet as well. She has pulled two workers off gas, I believe, as the gas is coming in very slowly now. Yes, she has. And uh, yeah, a couple more Zerglings out for her. Snoot, though, you know, Ooh. as we said before, he's got the Baneliness. He's going for Lots the third. Lings. He's playing a very straightforward style right now. But 20 Lings on the way for Scarlet. Is she about to just get hyper aggressive? Very interesting that she's doing that with a spine crawl that did get canceled. Maybe trying to mislead Snoot over there with a bit of a uh, mind game. A couple Ooh. of Banelings finishing up, though, and oh, they're getting a beautiful connection. Oh, ooh, oh, the part of me cheering for Scarlet just groaned a lot right there. That was a massive hit and a great start to this hold for Snoot. That's going to buy time for, the, time for the rest of the Banelings to morph in. And not only that, it forces Scarlet to build more Zerglings right now. She's already down 10 workers. She's committing so hard to this aggression, but she's not finding any purchase whatsoever. It's just not working out for her. Oh, even trying to get some damage done over by the third, and she does have an overwhelming number of lings over there. She is starting to make some degree of progress, but two more Banelings finish up, and they're going to be able to chase those oh. lings away. Another good connection, shutting down the last remaining lings that are really able to get aggressive now. She has some more reinforcements coming across the map, but she is all in at this point. This is a little bit uncharacteristic for Scarlet. Slightly sticky fingers in two occasions. Snoot, on the other hand, absolutely precise. Banelink detonations here. He is looking so decisive. He wants that round of eight spot. And uh, Scarlet, oh, she's actually going to cancel a few of these Banelings from morphing. Snoot caught now without any Banelings out. 18 more Zergens on the way. Surely he's not going to lose that third hatchery. Oh, well, a couple of Lings are popping out, are going to be able to salvage the situation at least by a bit of time. Scarlet. Whoa. does have roaches coming out, but that means that the roaches are going to be much further delayed. That gives Snoot a bit of time to kind of collect himself. He's getting out his own roaches right now. So against a big counterattack from Scarlet, it's going to be kind of difficult for Scarlet to get too much damage done. So many overlords on the way there for Snoot. He was so busy microing, did hit a bit of a block, but now he's got a ton of roaches coming out. He sees the roaches as Scarlet, and uh, that's going to, of course, tell him to just keep on building. No drones on the third. He's like, okay, just keep building units. Just keep building units. And uh, do not die. And he's just going to keep looking around. You know, he wants to know when Scarlet starts droning up that third. And he really doesn't need to start droning until he sees that. 
Yeah, Scarlet making nothing but lings and uh, looks like a couple of drones finally now coming out after having made a lot of roaches, but she wants to move out around the map. She wants to take a bit of map presence right now. Oh, uh, it's actually kind of scary though. She's down like 15 army supply, Ravi. I really Ooh. hope she doesn't commit in here. Oh, she's starting to move forward with a handful of these roaches, but as you were saying, if she commits in too far, Run. she's not going to be able to Run. escape out of here. She's starting to lose oh, these roaches. Oh, she's going for the snipe. Oh, but no. I don't know if she's going to be able to get it. She just doesn't have enough roaches there. Oh, that's a disaster as well. Like now, she was already down in the army count. She's lost five roaches for free, and she's got those Zerglings ready to snipe the third, but she's a bit tunnel vision right now, and the Zerglings of Snoot even realize what she's up to. He's going to be able to trap all these Zerglings, even if she gets the hatchery. Is it even worth it? Uh, I don't know at this point, Pig. I, I feel like it's probably not, but we'll see if Snoot, uh, Scarlet can do something to change the tides of how this game is going, because now Snoot is the one getting aggressive. He's got a nice little lead with those, uh, of course, the worker count, or what did have a lead with the work count, but of course, now that third expansion going to start getting uh, some mining done. Queens with a lot of energy to transfuse. Let's see what Scarlet can make happen. Ooh, good defensive setup from Scarlet. The link count coming in for Snoot is massive, though. They're starting to wrap around those roaches. The Ravages in the back dishing out a lot of damage. The Corrosive Biles forcing Scarlet's units to constantly even be moving rather than shooting. And it looks like Snoot here has just barely enough numbers to break through once again. This really is the point in the game where Snoot is a master. Just pushing with these roaches, oh. ravages, and zerglings. He knows how to control it just right. And he closes out the series three to one. GG, Snoot. Gonna be moving on to that round of eight. Big congratulations to him. And of course, he's gonna be earning himself a few more WCF points, but I think he's not done yet. He's gonna be looking for that round of four grand finals and eventually that first place trophy, but Really, cool. yeah. really good for him. Um, again, I think that the desk was talking about it before, but really has been looking for that big victory for a while. He's been considered that foreign hope for such a long time, but I think that big, big results will mean a lot to him. Cool, calm, and composed, taking it there in decisive fashion. He is looking really good there. Let's hear from the man himself over on the stage with Smix. Thank you very much, Pig. Congratulations, Snoot. It's so great to be talking to you on the main stage once again. Uh, you're, you're headed towards the round of eight, but can't help but feel like this is particularly a big deal for you as this is your first quarterfinal this year. Yeah, I mean, it was so close so many times. Every time I was eliminated, I lost 2-3. So I don't even feel like I did that badly in the previous tournaments. I uh, had some rough matches, but losing 2-3 twice, I mean, it happens, right? So I feel like I've been doing okay, and in practice it's been a little up and down, but in general, I'm feeling good about my level, but yeah, it, it feels good to finally be top eight again. And uh, in this series against Scarlet, I know historically you are up in head-to-heads against her, but that being said, obviously she is a very tough opponent and practicing a lot in Korea, so when it came to preparing against her, how did you do so? Uh, I studied so many VODs, and uh, I think also I have a little bit of a style advantage. So, uh, yeah, in the past I've done pretty well against Scarlet, and I think our styles match up in a way that favors me. So, uh, she's had a lot of really good results lately as well in CVC. Uh, I just try to think of ways that I could get an advantage in the game and just take it from there one game at a time, try to stay calm. and. Uh, yeah, maybe play a little bit aggressive also, because that uh, usually does pretty well in tournaments. And uh, lastly, I know a player like yourself doesn't want to settle for a quarterfinal finish. Your next opponent is going to be Kelazor, who actually defeated you in the round of 16 at WCS Austin. So are you confident you can get revenge against him? Yeah, I, last time last time I, uh, I felt like I could have done a little better. So I was so close to 3-0, and then the reverse happened. So this time, I want to show what my CVT can, you know, what my CVT can do. All right, well, congratulations again, Snoon. And with that, it'll be Jens Asgard advancing at the WCS Valencia.
That's right, unfortunately for Scarlet, she's seeing red here in this series as Snoot is able to take the victory three to one with some crisp timing attacks and some good aggression, uh, as he just alluded to there, rather than that. Yeah, rough start game number one. Scarlet kind of caught him off guard with all these links, but after that, it was kind of all Snoot. He just handled the early game so much better. I specifically love this game on Abyssal because they were pretty much even when they started that weird base rate scenario, but the focus fire and decision-making in that crisis was just better by Snoot. He killed a lot of drones. Scarlet did get one of the hatcheries, but killing 20 drones I think that was just better and even though later on the numbers were very close the moment that Snoot was getting ready for that big attack He just like immediately jumped upon the opportunity yeah. when he saw I have slightly more units here Those ravages are a little bit exposed just wrapped it around and I think that final game was perhaps the most decisive one it was under a lot of pressure, but stayed very calm composed got a couple of very good connections I think one or two manual det uh, detonations as right. well on the bay links. Yeah, excellent performance by Snoot and important for Snoot to overcome that round of 16, not curse, but the results that he's had in the past two tournaments. Yep, uh, definitely considering the ninth place positioning for him, being able to make his way back in the top eight, getting those points is huge. And I would still say that the series that he has coming up next mm. is going to be equally important to try to cement that because he's not, it's not like he's in the clear now. He's right. barely stepped in the door, but you know, the exit's right there. And yep. if he drops out here, then there's, you know, any any number of bad things can happen to him as everybody else furthers their position forward. Yeah. This is a very big opportunity for him. I like that he mentioned that he's like, well, you know, I got up to all, I could do it again. He's got to deliver. I think Snoot fans should be very happy with that series, and you are very close to having him kind of secure himself, not also mentally, right? Like getting the results that he wants should also make him play better in the future, right? Yeah. Is he in a good position points wise, Roddy? Or how is I, he? I mean, yeah, it's like Nate said, he is breaking into the top eight now, but that's not enough because then it all comes yeah. down to Montreal if he has a bad performance there. Yep. But I'm super excited for that series tomorrow. That's going to happen tomorrow, the quarterfinals. But Kalazur Snoot, because if we go back a couple months in time, we go back to Austin, we look at the round of 16, Kalazur Snoot. I think if he has any diehard Starker fan at that point, nine out of 10, if not yeah. like 9.8 out of 10, then would have said Snoot is absolutely going to take that series because this is normally where you know things end for Kalazur. Great player, but not good enough to defeat the absolute best. Yeah, yeah. If Kalazur has shown us this year that that was not a fluke, he is incredibly strong, perhaps the strongest Terran on this circuit, next to a uh, special major, however you want to call mm -hmm. it. So, right now, a couple months in the future, suddenly a lot of people look at this like that's going to be really hard for Snoot. And it's really funny to see how that has turned. And that's kind of what the WCS circuit is all about, right? It's all about like letting certain players improve and letting them really take their, their game to the next level. But that's a big series because yeah. last time maybe you could say maybe Snoot underestimated Kalazur a tiny bit when they went up against each other in Austin. That will absolutely not happen right now. Snoot knows how good Kalazur is and that's a series to look forward to. All about those underdogs, all about that worldwide stage as well as our next series coming up in just a few months moment's time is going to be Probe going up against Neve. We're going to go to a short break now, and when we return, we have a PvP as our defending Undisputed Champion goes up against Probe. <laughs> 